Today we are focusing on the NFC East. So, Tom, we're going to start with you and the Dallas Cowboys. What would make your checklist for the Cowboys to have a successful 2023 season? Well, first of all, yes, we get a lot of material out of how that final play played out. There's not a lot of 70-yard plays in the playbook. You're trying something different. Didn't work out. Poor Zeke. That may well be his final play as a Dallas Cowboy. All right, let's talk about the 2023 Cowboys. To me, the first thing you got to accomplish is show me keep Dak Prescott healthy. There it is right there on the board. All right, 2020, obviously, Dak suffers that significant ankle dislocation and fracture, takes him out. 2021 comes back. He's got a shoulder strain through the course of training camp. That's something that he had to work through. He also had a calf strain later on that season. Then last season, comes out of the gate, breaks his thumb. Now, the Cowboys won a lot of games last season without Dak Prescott in the lineup. When Dak is on, when he is in rhythm, he's shown he can be a very good NFL quarterback. Obviously, has to cut back on the turnovers this season, having that rhythm, having the reps, something that's Going to ha- it's going to help him out. Number two, show me, embrace Mike McCarthy's offense. Mike McCarthy taking over as the play caller for Kellen Moore, who moved on now out there with the Chargers. McCarthy's had a lot of success. Going back to his days in Green Bay, he has worked with a lot of different quarterbacks. They're still using Dak Prescott's language, so that helps out some with the learning curve here. But schematically, philosophically, there are going to be some things that are different. Cowboys have been running one type of system for quite a while. This is going to be a transition, but there's certainly optimism in Dallas that things are going to head the right direction here. And then the last one is really just let the young stars shine. We talked so much about Stephon Gilmore, Brandon Cooks, the veterans who have come into Dallas here. But this Cowboys team, it's about Trayvon Diggs. It's about C.D. Lamb. It's about Micah Parsons. These are the guys they're going to pay. These are the guys they want to build the entire program around. Yes, you're hoping some of those older players are going to fill in some of those gaps. When you're talking about building this program the right way, the guys who have to continue to grow and be even better when you're talking about a guy like Micah Parsons, it's those young guys who, let's see if they can make a jump, if that can put them over the top, Mike. Mm. Yeah. Uh, all right, let's go to Philadelphia uh, and the Philadelphia Eagles, who won this division last year. Can they be the first repeat champion since, what, 2004, we said? Uh, we shall see. If so, come on, come on. In. it starts with number one. Number one, Jalen Hurts, after that contract extension, you know, you always hear people say, well, once a guy gets paid, what are you going to see? I mean, this guy almost got squashed to death in uh, FedEx Field one year when I was covering the game when the railing fell over and he was just like, video, Mike. cool, all right, get up. He starts posing with the fans and everything. This is a guy that has never uh, folded under pressure at all, so I don't think that contract is going to change anything. So same old, cool, number one, Jalen Hurts. That's my number one on the checklist. Number two, there's a transition on defense from Jonathan Gannon to Sean Desai. Now, Philadelphia, Sean Desai traditionally does not blitz very much. That is something that was an unbelievable, to me, topic of conversation last year with Jonathan Gannon. Why doesn't he blitz more? He didn't have to. You've got a defensive line that was able to get home and get to the quarterback. Why send extra rushers if you don't have to? So I'm already seeing into the future. I feel like Sean Desai is going to have to prove himself uh, to this fan base, despite the fact that he's not just blitzing six and seven people, which some defensive coordinators in the past have done. But regardless, they've still got a very strong defensive line, despite the fact that they lost Javon Hargrave. They've added pieces via the draft the last couple of years. So I think it should be a a smooth transition defensive uh, to defense new defensive coordinator number three look if you do strength of schedule you can do it based on last year's records I don't like to do that I like to do it based on win projections if you do it that way they're about middle of the road so it's not the toughest schedule in the league but on the back end that's where I start to say eh things could get a little bit hairy so on the front of the schedule the Eagles better win those games early on you're seeing the commanders you need to beat the commanders this year you got two games in the first uh, half of the season because after the bye week at Kansas City Buffalo San Francisco at Dallas at Seattle you got two games against the Giants who you have beaten uh, previously the last couple of years but that team could be a little bit dangerous so better get those wins early you start tripping up on games you're supposed to win early in the season that could spell trouble mm. I love the fact that I get to go right after you and you just did the birds. We got the Cowboys. I, as a former Giant, I get a lot of Cowboys fans that come up to me and are like, this is our year. We're going to do it. Like, I feel like it's the same conversation I have with Cowboys fans every single year. And then birds fans just come up to me and just we exchange pleasantries. So 
I, of course, I took the Giants. And here's my checklist for Giants fans. If you're watching at home, here's what we got to do, all right? Number one, I know all the focus right now is on Saquon yeah, Barkley, all right? <laughs> it's Saquon Barkley needs to sizzle in the second half of the season. I'm not worried about training camp. I don't care when he shows up. I don't care if I even see him in preseason. But here's what I want. I want the same Saquon we saw in the first half of the season last year. I want him in the second half, all right? He, his numbers have declined as the season went along. I want him fresh. Look at his numbers. Here he is, first nine games of the season. Look, 22 touches, 10 less touches down, down the stretch there of the second half of the season. But look at the rushing yards, almost half in, this, in the second half of the season. That's what the Giants need. They need Saquon. Give me Saquon motivated. He's fired up. He's working out. He's looking for that new contract. I will always bet on a hungry dog, someone who's looking for that new contract. Give me Saquon sizzling down the stretch in the season. Number two, I just pushed Mike Garofalo out of the way because that's what the Giants need to do. They need to block Philly. I don't know if you've heard, but they're loading on the defensive line. It doesn't matter. I could be the defensive coordinator, and they can still get to the quarterback with those guys that they have up front. They just drafted another big dog in Jalen Carter, so they've got to find a way to block the Eagles, block the birds, block them up front. When they played them in the regular season, four sacks in the game late in the season. Playoff game, they give up five sacks. Daniel Jones was running for his life. Evan Neal needs to be play, play better. Hassan Reddick basically took over that game in the regular season. Um, and then the third point, all right, defensively, Wink Martindale is a genius. And I think what he did with this defense was phenomenal. The one area that they need to improve on is interceptions. They only had six on the entire season. They need to create some more takeaways. They did a great job of stripping the ball out, created a ton of forced fumbles, but Adoree Jackson being healthy should help that. But this secondary, they need to be more opportunistic. There were a lot of dropped interceptions last year as well. So that's something defensively they can figure out. So give me my three real quick. One, two, three. Number two right here, block Philly. Here's what the, the byproduct of bl better blocking, which John Michael Smith, JMS, the new center that the Giants drafted, is going to certainly help with that. The byproduct of that is DJ 4K. Daniel Jones throwing for 4,000 yards. It will happen if they find a way to protect him. Okay, here's the trouble with my checklist because I got the commanders. It can only be three, three things because we got we got a long list of things that we. You can want do ten? Here. You want top ten? Woo! So here we go. Elevate the offense under Sam Howell and Eric Bieniemy. Who's Sam Howell? Well, he started one game, 169 yards. He had a passing touchdown, a rushing touchdown, and Ron Vera said, "This is our guy." He's made one start. They didn't want to go out and do anything else. Sam Howell's the guy in Washington, and then there was the questions about Bieniemy. Can he run this offense? Well, here's the thing, the positive. Howell and Bieniemy, it, it has to get better because this is over the last five seasons. And look at these ranks. Over the last five seasons, it's Ouch. been abysmal. So you make the slightest bit of improvement, and it might feel huge in Washington. Number two, and again, this list could have been really long. Chase Young, they need him productive. <laughs> they need him healthy. Keep him on the field. He missed all but three games last year. Washington didn't pick up his fifth-year option, so this is a prove-it year for him. And then number three, and this is a huge one in Washington. How about this? Restore respect. I worked in that area a long time ago, just uh, maybe just a little under two decades ago. And you felt like when you were there, everyone talks about their glory years under Joe Gibbs, and this was a dynasty, and it's been a minute since then. And since then, it's been difficult there. They've changed their name. They're now changing owners. There's been an identity crisis. They want a new stadium. It's been a lot in Washington. And when you look at this division, it's really tough right now. You've got the Eagles, you've got the Giants, and the Cowboys who are all looking at a postseason berth. So maybe it's not, hey, we're getting to the postseason, but restore respect beyond the way up. And Ron Rivera certainly has his work cut out for him.